Good evening, everyone. I hope you all are having a great, great day. Um, I am Millie from My Adventures in ESL, and I'm happy to be with you all today. I am just getting out of school not too long ago, so it's been a long day. This is my very last week of school here in my school district, so I'm excited and I am doing a lot of last minute things like packing up the room. I realized I have way too much stuff, so packing up my room, I am doing last minute compliance with my team. We are getting our ESL folders together. We are Unfortunately, there were some students that, you know, um, needed some last minute help with their grades and getting clarification about their grades. So we are doing all of that last minute stuff and then we will be free in a week right before Memorial Day. So today I'm going to be talking to you and discussing with everybody about math strategies. Things that you can do to support your English language learners in math some really cool tips and some really cool strategies that you can do to implement or that you can implement. If you have not already, I really suggest that you go and you download the math strategies tip and cheat sheet. You go to myadventuresinesl.com, math strategies, download it, be sent straight to your inbox to get the latest math strategies. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dive into everything. And of course, I always have my notes so I can make sure I go over everything with you all today. So if you want to, if you haven't already, um, like I said, make sure you go to download those math strategies. And if I haven't introduced myself or this is your first time joining you, my name is Millie. I am a first and foremost an ESL teacher. I teach middle school. I've taught sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. This past year, I have been a peer coach where I go out and help other teachers and um, writing curriculum for our school district. And I want you to know, or I want to know in the comments, how you all are supporting your English language learners. What are some strategies, what are some tips that you are doing to support your ELLs in math? I can remember a couple of years ago, I had an amazing opportunity to teach um, newcomers. And our school pilot is this new program where we pretty much have the newcomers all day long. So we had them for math, we had them for ELA, we had them for science, and we had them for social studies. What we did, since we weren't certified to teach math, the teachers, we had a, math, a group of math teachers at our school that supported us. And one of the things that we kept getting pushback on was how do we support our English language learners in math? And so uh, as a team, we all sat down, we all came up with some strategies, and that's what I'm sharing with you all today. So I'm going to dive in today with you with some strategies that I've used with my students and working with a team, strategies that they've used, and it is in the cheat sheet. So if you have it, go ahead once again and download that cheat sheet, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the PowerPoint. I'm going to jump in and on this Monday morning, if you want to just drop in the comments how you're feeling and add what are some strategies that you're doing with your students, okay? And supporting them in math. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over and dive into some tips. So the first thing is when, like I mentioned earlier, one of the things that we noticed was that a lot of our students will come down during our ELD time, that's the English language development time, or, or intervention, and they would pretty much ask us, you know, Miss Williams, hey, I need help in math. What can you do to support me? Can you show me how to do this math problem? Can you show me how, what does this word mean? And one of the biggest things that we noticed, and I'm gonna share with you all, was vocabulary. That was a big thing, especially for our newcomers and also teaching them the steps. So let's go ahead and dive into these tips. The first thing is really obvious, is use visuals as much as possible with your newcomers in math. A great way to do this is to make abstract math ideas more concrete for English language learners. So 
one of the biggest takeaways that I had during my time teaching newcomers was make everything concrete. If it's too abstract, a lot of times they have, especially at this age group, age range, they have a lot of difficulty. So make it concrete. And one of the ways to make it concrete is to show visuals as much as possible. I showed you all this example of a multiplication table. But another example can be something as simple as diagrams, graphs, pictures, number lines. Even if you're counting, show pictures of apples of, of one, two, three. If you're counting apples, you can say, okay, this is one apple, this is two apples, this is three apples. So show visuals as much as possible to make it concrete. And once they see those visuals, make sure they're able to uh, explain those concepts. The next thing is to introduce and pre-teach key vocabulary to the students before introducing word problems and new concepts. I want to stress here, this is not just for beginners. This can be for your intermediate, this can be for your long-term ELLs, but it's really important to introduce the vocabulary. One of the things that's really popular that we use with our students is a Freyer model. And in this Freyer model, we use it to teach new vocabulary and phrases as well. So on this Freyer model, you see an example of the characteristics, non-examples, examples, and the definition. I would like to say here for newcomers, you want to make the definition very student friendly. So that way they can go back and they can apply it. Also have the students practice pair them up and have them practice using the definition or using the words and sentences and also reward the students who are constantly using it throughout the lesson. Another tip is to use manipulatives to support the students learning in math. These supports also increase engagement in your classroom and they connect to very important math concepts. So if you like hands-on learning, Manipulatives are so important, and I can remember our newcomers using these blocks when they were learning how to do place values. So it's extremely important. Use manipulatives. That was one of the biggest tips that we learned from our newcomer class and from our newcomer teachers this year or that year. The next one is math video tutorials. They are so powerful. Khan Academy is a great resource, and it's free and it aligns directly with the Math Common Core standards. So I will give you a little tour of Khan Academy, but this is a really great uh, tool and website that you can use for your students. One of the things is this particular year that we used it, and I used it a lot this year, students will always come down, like I mentioned earlier, and they will say, Ms. Williams, um, how do you do this particular math problem? And if I didn't know how to do it, or if I needed refreshing, I always will go to Khan Academy, teach myself how to do it, and then in turn teach the students. So it's a great resource, sign your students up for it. A lot of the videos are also in Spanish as well on YouTube. So it's, you can use it as far as bilingual for some of your students who may need a translation. Another tool that you can use is Math Interactive Notebooks. One of the teachers I work with, shout out to Ms. Hall, um, used math or uses math interactive notebooks in her classroom. It is such a powerful resource that your students use throughout the year. They can always go back to the math interactive notebook. In the case of Ms. Hall, she did simple things like she started off with numbers and then she did a multiplication table. She will also add visuals in there as well. And throughout the school year, the students use their notebook. So, Consider there are a lot of places that you can go to on Teachers Pay Teacher that have free resources, or you can just keep it simple. It doesn't have to be a lot of cutting and pasting. So just keep it simple, but it's a great resource for newcomers that year. Some even use the Math Interactive Notebook the following year when they moved up the grade as a resource. So it's a very powerful resource that you can use with your newcomers. A next, another thing that we talked about in our professional development is math anchor charts. It ties into having a visual in the classroom. With the anchor charts, what, did you, what you can do is write down or display the concepts that you are teaching in the classroom. 
So I even use, and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, I even use anchor charts in my ELA class or my uh, ESL class with my students. So it's a great resource to use. It's visuals and the students can refer to it throughout the school year. Another strategy that you can use is called cubes. It's an anchor chart. And basically it is a step-by-step -step process that you can use with your students with word problems. So the first thing to do is the kids go in, they circle the numbers, then you, they underline the question, they box the keywords. And I'm gonna pause right here. For your newcomers, if you're kind of saying, well, they may not know what the keywords are. You, this is a great opportunity for you as a teacher to teach them the keywords. Use that sprayer model, pre-teach those words, and then have the students go back and then box them in. Then for E, you can eliminate what you don't need, and S is solve and check. This system teaches students how to work through word problems. We all know, especially in middle and high school and upper elementary as well, the students are encountering word problems. And sometimes, and most times rather, that can be a really big struggle for newcomers. We had a lot of students that come and they could, they were great at math, but one of the biggest um, encounters that they had was word problems. So this is a great uh, tool and strategy to teach your newcomer. Now what I'm going to do is I am just basically going to give you a preview of our math differential strategies cheat sheet. This right here is free. Go download it. Have it sent directly to your email box and share this video with people that you might know that can benefit from it. So in our math strategies interactive cheat sheet, let me switch over to it. Here we go. Okay, so in our math strategies interactive cheat sheet, let me see if I'm here. Oh, hey, y'all, is this video? Oh, wrong thing. There we go. <laughs> So in our math differential she she we had we had did a professional development with all the math teachers in our building and we decided to just come up with some great strategies that we can use with our students. So in this PDF document, I basically outlined all of the strategies that we talked about and that we shared. You can see in here we spoke about pre-teaching vocabulary, visuals, highlighting the key terms. One of the things that one of the teachers said is she tears the assignments for her students. So someone gave the example if the students are studying slope, some of the students could be doing the basics, whereas the higher students in your class can be applying more advanced options. We had choice boards, level tax cards, grouping. You can see a whole list of strategies. I also want to share with you our math scaffolding and differentiation chart. So on this chart here, you can see we have beginner, level one, intermediate, level two and three, high intermediate, level four, and advanced, level five. Right there, I've already, already provided you with some differentiation and some scaffolding for each level. But you can also go in and create your own and modify for your students. So really consider this for your students. So basically, I just took these strategies at the top and leveled them off based on the needs of some of your students. Now I'm going to give you a quick tour of the Khan Academy website and I simply love it. So what we're going to do is take a tour and you can kind of see how this has been really beneficial for our students. So here on the Khan Academy website, and let me kind of go back a little bit for it. On the website, you can view, you can see uh, grades from early math all the way up to um, high school math. <laughs> and what I love about it, and I'm going to go on eighth grade because that's what grade I'm teaching this year. 
So you see that they have, for example, numbers and operations. So I go to eighth grade, and when I go to eighth grade, it populates a lot of tools that you can use to help your students and that your students can just log on and use as well. So in this case, you can have uh, little videos that you want to have for your students. So I'll just click on one for you all. And in the video, and this you also have this available on YouTube as well, but in the video, it walks you through step by step how to do the problem. So you can work it out as a class, you and your you can work it out as a teacher and then go back and teach the class if you need to do that. But I love it because it takes you through step by step how to complete the math problem. Also right here, it gives you practice. So if the students need to practice, then it gives you good examples on what they need to do to practice. And they also have a little quiz at the bottom to make sure you're checking for understanding. The next thing that I want to show you all as well is that we here in, Tennessee, in Memphis, um, the school district that I work for, we use um, Engage New York, which is Eureka Math. One of the things that we love is that in the modules and in the lessons and the workbooks, you can get them translated in different languages. So if I go to grade seven, I can see all of the different languages that I can get the module translated to or the lesson translated to. It can be a really, really powerful resource if your students are wanting to know how to learn a topic and they're, and they're fluent in their first language and you can pull up a lesson in their first language, have it in English and have them work through some of the modules and some of the lessons. And if you all need to, I'll put a link to our Padlet where we have all of these resources available for you as well. I'll make sure to include a link. Oops, okay, so let me switch back. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so I want to thank you all um, everybody that joined me or that's watching this on the replay, if you haven't already, just make sure you take a moment and subscribe to My Adventures in ESL forward slash math strategies. That way you can go ahead, get you the download, get you the free link, and you can share this with people that you may know or people that you think may benefit. Once you go to the download, it will be sent straight to your inbox. So once again, thank you. If you have any questions or anything that you would like to say or comment, just drop them in the comment box and I'll get right back with you. This strategy has been so, so powerful. Or these strategies have been so powerful for my students. Still to this day, I use a lot of them. So once again, my adventures at ESL.com forward slash math strategies. Just drop um, a comment in the box if you have any questions. Go download that cheat sheet, and I will see you all next time. Bye.